As we get started, I just want to help you understand um, how visibility aligns to uh, what we're about to talk about um, with with federal buyers, et cetera. But it aligns to sales in something called inbound and outbound sales. If you're not familiar with this term, inbound sales are sales activities that come into you. You answer your phone, you answer the email, you answer the door because people are knocking on it, looking to explore working with your company or learn more from your company. When they're reaching out to you, it's inbound sales. When you're reaching out to them, knocking on doors, picking up the phone and trying to schedule meetings, that's outbound sales. And in the federal market is such a huge market that uh, you're barely gonna be able to touch a fraction of 1%, certainly not 2% or more. So that means um, when you think about inbound and outbound sales, 1% of it at most is outbound and 99% of it is inbound sales. And that's really why I'm talking about today with visibility is because visibility ties directly to inbound sales. People buy from those they know, like, and trust. And what I wanna do is to make sure buyers know you, right? When you really think about it, do buyers know you? Do they know of your company? Do they know what you sell? Even something as simple as in this chat, do I know, or do the others who are here with you know, you know what your company name is, maybe what town you're in, in particular, what your core competency is, what you sell in just one or two words, right? Not whole paragraphs, but just one or two words that begin to help us know you so that we can then begin to develop that relationship or understanding where we can know and like you uh, and trust you as well. Um, but before you can get them to uh, like and trust you, you need to make sure that you get them to know you. And that's what we're going to be covering down on today in um, visibility, maximizing your visibility score. And I'll talk about what is a visibility score uh, as we go through today's training. But most importantly, you can think about it related to today's training topic, how to help federal agencies find you. Um, they can't find you if you're not visible. Visible, And so the score is being visible. And it's really important uh, that you be visible. So I'm going to start off today's training talking about why it's vital for your company to be visible to federal buyers. I already alluded to it a little bit, just saying how many buyers there are out there um, and the just sheer volume. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of buyers that are out there. The second thing I want to cover down on is a little bit of slide, a little bit of show and tell on a website. Um, but what does it take to get a perfect federal visibility score? I coined that term, uh, but it's not rocket science, right? It is really just a process that no one taught me when I was a government contractor. And the minute I uh, sold my last company and started doing this, I'm like, man, I want to teach everybody this. I wish I had known. And so we're going to talk about visibility score. And then I want to wrap up with giving you some tips. I think I got like six or seven tips on how to maximize your chances that federal buyers are going to find your company when they go looking for a company like yours, right? You might have heard, may have heard the term market research. So when federal buyers are doing market research, how can you maximize the chances they're going to find you? Well, we'll dive into that and I'll talk about it. <clears throat> if you don't know who I am, my name is Neil McDonald. I am the president of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce and co-founder of GovCon in a Box, which we're going to be seeing today. I want to welcome you to my federal sales training where I provide tips for success in the federal market. I spent 20 years in the federal market as a small business owner. And since 2018, I've been teaching people like you that government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process. When we follow a process A to Z, we're going to have repeatable, predictable results. And this is what I want for you. It's why I come back every day to do the training to help you learn the how that will implement the processes that you're going to do. Um, inside of uh, here, this slide, you probably see that I'm suggesting you subscribe to the government contracting success newsletter this is our newsletter it's the largest one out there on linkedin related to government contracting and every single week we're putting out great content in there so make sure you subscribe speaking of being on linkedin if you're on youtube or anywhere else that's totally cool to be out there but make sure you come in as well and join linkedin and connect with us send me a note when you're connecting say hey i saw your training let's connect uh, but it also gives you a chance to connect with all these other people when you see other people in the chat in YouTube, you can't really build any networking there. But when you're over here, while you're listening to me do the training, you can network with other people and then even offline. The other thing is tomorrow, I'm gonna to be talking about um, the three paths of federal revenue. I really wanna reinforce that in the federal government, the contract dollars that are spent get spent down three uh, revenue streams is what I describe it as. And so we'll go into that tomorrow. Make sure you register for that training. Last thing before we dive fully into the training is just uh, I wanted to congratulate our newest company <clears throat> and all the other ones, but newest company to the 100 Club. Uh, and so this company, Global Trading, trading with uh, Viraj, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Tell me if I'm not. Um, 
we're new LinkedIn friends and connections, right? Um, but global trading was exciting because I watched them come in with a really low score and work their way up. And, um, and so we're going to be talking about the visibility score, but I just want to congratulate global trading for joining the list of 100 club companies. And just to put it in perspective, this is 34 companies that have a score of 100 out of one to 100, 34 companies that have a, have a 100 score for visibility score out of 360,000 small businesses. These companies are doing what it takes to make sure they're visible. And I want to make sure you're joining them. So go check out GovCon in a box and you can figure that out. It's free to be able to get your score up to 100. Okay, so um, let's get started talking about why it's vital uh, for your company to be visible to federal buyers, right? The, the first uh, thing, and I haven't said this in a while, so it'd be great because I always get uh, new people joining us in training and, and maybe you're new, but federal buyers do not buy from the best. They don't buy from the best company doing painting or cybersecurity, right? They don't look around and go, oh, we want to buy from the best. The federal buyer buys from the best company that shows up. And showing up could be you doing outbound sales and knocking on the door, responding to uh, RFPs, et cetera. But it also could be inbound where they go out and they try to find companies that can support their needs. And those companies that they find are the ones showing up. And of those, they'll pick the best to work with. So it's really important. It doesn't matter if you're the best at what you do, if nobody knows what you do. And I, I want to make sure that you're doing, you're increasing your visibility so that um, people know that. Going into the second bullet here, I, I talk about this and I mentioned a minute ago, if buyers can't find you, then uh, um, am I sharing? Sorry, just pausing for one second. Okay. Um, if buyers can't find you, then how can they buy from you? This is a really simple statement, right? But um, too often we start our company and we're doing some of this activity, but buyers might be looking for us and, and we're basically got the invisibility cloak from Harry Potter on our company. We want to take that invisibility cloak off and make sure that they can find us when they're looking for companies like ours. And so that's really important. Um, when you think about the federal market and federal buyers at all these different agencies and, and buyers are not just contracting officers, they're uh, contracting specialists who work with a contracting officer. There's small business professionals who work within an agency trying to uh, be kind of a liaison between the small business industry and the government agency to help small businesses support the mission. It could be program office personnel. The people have the very people have the need um, or the people who are helping define the budgets. So it could be anybody in there who's doing market research related to a particular requirement that the government has. The typical path that they follow um, when they're searching is they'll look at incumbents that they have already and they're working with. Then they'll look at people who have responded to RFPs, look at people who have responded or companies who have responded to RFIs and sources sought. Um, as they begin to come out and they're like, okay, we still wanna do more market research. They will look internally like HHS has its own supplier portal. If you're not registered in there, um, register in there, right? But they have their own supplier portal. So HHS buyers might look at their own supplier portal first for small businesses like yours. And then most uh, agency market researchers then come farther out to DSBS. And if you're not familiar with your small business profile, it's made up of your SAM registration profile and the SBA's uh, dynamic small business search or uh, DSBS profile. Those two together are your small business profile. That is where the bulk of market research happens. That's where theoretically government buyers can find industry small business sellers. Um, and so you wanna be understanding how that market research is done. Part of how they use the tool, whether it's an internal um, tool like HHS has or DSBS when they're coming farther out, they search just like you do, right? And so it's really important to understand um, how they do their market research. They come out and they put keywords in, they might choose a couple of filters. If you think about going into Google, you might sit there and say, you know, show me plumbing if I'm looking for, uh, you know, leaky faucet or, or a clogged sink or something, right? I might look for plumbers and then I might begin to filter them down. Well, I'm looking for plumbers in, in my area or I'm looking for plumbers that have four star ratings, whatever it is. Um, every time a market researcher goes to research, they generally have options to filter down the results. And I'll show you in a minute uh, one of the ways that we do it. But buyers just are you. Buyers search just like you search for when you're looking for something personal. Um, okay, and the last thing I want you to understand is being truly visible. The reason it's so important to me that you're visible is not actually 
the, my number one reason for uh, why I really want to get you to be visible is not so that you can get found by the buyer. It actually is because any company that takes the time to be truly visible to the buyer takes the time to figure out what we sell, right? You really are understanding what we sell and what terms are we using compared to what terms are our target buyer using? I was talking with somebody today, a customer about staffing and recruiting. It's like, well, let's go in and look at the strategic um, plans that the government has around filling their own employee needs, like hiring more and more employees. Let's look at how they say it. Maybe they talk about talent acquisition or staff augmentation or recruiting services, whatever it is, when you are becoming visible, the exercise to become visible helps you truly understand what your company sells. So you wanna go through that, not just to fill out a database, but to understand what you sell. And, and when you understand what you sell, it means you had to do extra research on um, how the government buys, how your target customer buys, right? And so now, because you became truly visible, uh, that exercise has led you to have a deeper understanding of what you sell, which you can communicate to your team. And it helps you really understand how a government buyer buys and be able to um, have more success trying to sell to them. Okay, so let's talk about what it takes to get a perfect federal visibility score. And this is a term I did. Visibility score is how visible are you to the uh, to the buyer and federal means I'm only caring about federal. That's the world I play in. Anything you do in the federal pretty much is going to help everywhere else. But I play in the federal world because you can build a hundred million dollar company in here if you took time, years, and and really built your uh, experience in there. But we created the federal visibility score. Pretty much the number one reason we created it is because um, you and so many other small businesses are invisible to federal buyers. Uh, and I, I feel horrible that I don't have the exact statistics with me, but trust me that I have the data to back up this rough number that I'll give you. But an example is 50% uh, of 8A companies are 100% invisible to federal buyers. And we're talking about 8A companies that have past performance, have experience or something as subcontractors, et cetera, but they're invisible to the market researcher when they're doing research. Uh, something like 75 to 80% easy of the 360,000 companies in your profile are missing a capability statement. You have no capability statement. So imagine if a federal buyer goes, you know what, only show me results of people who have a capability statement. That way I can do more research. I can, I can look at their profile, then look at their narrative, then go to the website, right? That whole kind of experience, that journey of a market researcher. And so I saw, frankly, I saw this seven years ago, uh, in 20, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to do the math in my head, but in 2017, when I sold my company and I started uh, the GovCon Chamber under a different name back in the end of 2017 and then 2018 is when it really started kicking off. Right then and there, I realized all the mistakes I had made with my own company, which could have been way more successful if I had been doing what I teach now, right? And one of the most basic things is how buyers search and, and the visibility score was how invisible I was. We had such great past performance but we weren't telling anybody through the, the ways that the buyer looks for a company like ours. And so I already mentioned this, that a visibility score, the makeup is a complete SAM profile and a complete DSBS. That's the SBA's dynamic small business uh, search tool or profile, right? Um, SAM, you get through SAM.gov and hopefully you know that already. Um, and then DSBS, the way you get to that is through connect.sba.gov. Both of those profiles come together to create a small business profile. And those two are what I use for a federal visibility score. I do not come up with my own databases. I do not say, hey, come over here and register here. and We'll give you some unique score. No, all I do is look at what we should be doing in our federal databases and say, have you finished everything? If you haven't, I just want to tell you. And the easiest way for me to tell you what needs to be done is to give you that score. So let me go show you what... Um, uh, what's fully completed, right? And take a quick look at uh, GovCon in a box. If you haven't seen it, make sure you come over here after the training and look up your own company, but govconinabox.com. Um, so here's the homepage. I'm going to come in here and I like going to number three, which is find teammates. It's basically where I can browse all the companies, right? So I mentioned down here at the bottom, 360,585 uh, companies in DSBS is active. And um, so in rough numbers, that's a very accurate number, but even DSBS data is a little hiccup, but your company's in here, so go find it. Um, but if I come in here, 360,000 companies, just really quickly, if I take this and I say visibility score, 
right in the middle. That's a filter. I say, show me everybody who has 100. And here are the 34 companies, right? These are the 34 that I showed. I can come in here and see there. They all have capability narratives, so I can come down and learn more about them. Um, let me reset this really quick. So th that's visibility score on 100. People have 100. We say on your visibility score right here that if you don't have, um, hey, Alex, why is the, the eye is not working. Um, if I come down here and say, let's just say 50 as an example, right? If I say, do you have a score of 50 or below? And I say you're invisible if you have a score of 70 and below. But let's just say 50, right? 348,000 companies have a score of less than uh, 50. Look at these companies. And I'm not picking on you. My company, my last company would have had a score of nine or 15 or something um, because I didn't even know about it. And this is what I'm trying to say is come in here and look at it. If I look at uh, um, this one here, custom computer, uh, whatever. Well, you saw the first thing. Let me back up for one second. Custom computer systems. They have no capability narrative. When a market researcher goes searching and they see you have no narrative, they move on. You know what it's like, right? They don't, they don't need to look at your profile if somebody else does have a narrative and, and that's a field in DSBS. But if I click on it, I can come in here and see that they don't list a website. They don't list a capability statement. These are not Neil's things. I'm looking into the federal databases that you registered in so federal buyers can find you. And I'm saying, oh my God, all of these people are missing this information. If somebody would just tell them, then you could increase your visibility score, which perhaps increases the likelihood buyers find you, right? No guarantee. But what it does guarantee is you're invisible right now, and then you could be visible, whether you found the second thing. Um, and so come in here and look at this stuff. Um, I don't even uh, dive too far into it. This is probably a newer company, and that's fine. But there are a lot of companies. I'm not going to go find one, but right here, you see USA Spending. We plug in the information right from USA Spending, and there are many companies who have experience in USA Spending, but they don't put it into DSBS where it can go. Here's the problem. When a market researcher goes looking for a company like yours and they use US or they use DSBS, the dynamic small business search tool, that's the market research tool. When they use that and they go to the bottom and they see you have no past performance in DSBS, their first thought is not, well, let me go check USA spending, right? Instead, their thought is, well, let me go to the next one. Let me go to the next company. Let me go to the next company. I'm looking for somebody who's got this kind of skill set and they've been paid for it before, things like that, right? Um, inside here, by the way, when you come in, I provide to this company custom computer system. If if they find me, I'm happy to uh, help them do all this pro bono because I just did it. And by the way, when I say pro bono, it's free for everybody. I'm just not going to help anybody, but I will help these guys uh, just because I'm using their company. But I put a little video here, right? Your capability statement is missing. I have this little video and I don't know how long. 19 seconds. Right. <laughs> That particular video is only 19 seconds, but I say, here's what you need to do. And on each one of these, I tell you what you need to do to fix it. And, and you can maybe see people in the chat who tell you they've been on the journey of growing their score. And it is a really pretty straightforward process with the guidance I provide. And it's, and it's all right there for you. Um, let me just reset this one more time and come back. Um, some of these filters that are in here, it's really important to track on this. Like if I said, show me a company that is an 8 a small business and that has experience and maybe i say sharepoint right let me just take this one for a second and i don't i haven't done this research before oh this is pretty good there's 100 110 in there if a, if a federal buyer can search this way then why wouldn't they right let me change it one more time to just try administrative Administ, administrative so now 639, so there's a lot of activity out there, um, a lot of good companies, but there's 5,000 8A firms, right? So if you're an administrative firm and you're not showing up, then that begins to hurt you. Okay, let me back up. Um, one other thing, just uh, an aside as you come down, if you're looking at some of these companies and, and um, let me just bring up somebody I know who doesn't have a hundred score, but, <laughs> but I was just talking to him and they're working on their score. So tomorrow you'll probably see me shout them out for getting it. But uh, a company like this, if I liked uh, this company and I thought maybe they'd be good for teaming partners, et cetera. Um, by the way, look at this right here. They have past performance in DSBS, but not in USA spending because they don't have prime contracts, but they have a lot of good 
uh, subcontracts or commercial contracts. So they have them in here. A market researcher could see that. But right here, I favorite them. Um, if I favorite them, when I come back in at any given point, I can just check out favorites. And here's, you know, Blend and Seahill, Graham, et cetera. So you have this ability to use the browser, not just to check your own score, but to find teammates and start working together. Okay, so let me talk about getting found. Um, so I went through that tool really fast. Make sure you go uh, check out govconinabox.com. And you can see that right there on the bottom of my slide. You can probably see it across the uh, my image. I don't know if that one's working, but just govconinabox.com allows you to do what, or I guide you through what it takes to get to the 100 Club. And the 100 Club, really all it means is that you went into SAM and DSBS and maximize the fields that are in there that are available to you to communicate to a buyer uh, that you're available. I wanna give you an example of one that's in there. It's one of the most basic ones, but there's one in there that says, accept credit cards, yes or no. And if you say no, then you're subliminally telling a buyer, hey, we can't accept credit cards. So why would you think we can accept, uh, accept a million dollar contract, right? So don't let that yes or no hurt you. It's because they might search on that. Show me companies who can accept a credit card. May, it means maybe they're further along. Um, and it doesn't really, because any bank can accept a credit card on your behalf. It's it's very easy to get that set up, right? You just have to learn how to do it. But in inside of a day, you can have it set up. Um, just go into Sam and change that to yes. Something as simple as that allows you to move forward on uh, towards the 100 Club, but it also makes sure that you stay on the short list with buyers as they're filtering you down. Okay, the second thing is, um, I talked about the capability statement uh, and inside of DSBS, this is a fairly new field that they have, uh, it, like in the last year or so. And um, it's a field that just allows you to put a link in there on whether you have a capability statement. The capability statement, about 80% uh, of the companies out there do not have it. And so here's two things I want you to do to maximize the chances buyers find your company. First off, put the capability statement inside of the uh, inside of DSBS, put a link to it. The most important thing about this is make sure that link leads back to your company website because uh, we want them to go down the rabbit hole, right? Sometimes we it's, it's important for a potential buyer to be consuming more and more information about your company. The more they consume, the more you get closer to them uh, inviting you in to talk, frankly. And so put a capability statement in DSBS and then make sure it leads back to um, your website. But also take that capability statement itself, the PDF, and put that on LinkedIn as an attachment. You can put it in the experience section. Every single one of your employees, you can encourage them to just put it in their experience section. If you're um, responsible primarily for sales and you have the featured section of uh, LinkedIn, you can put it in there. And one last thing is occasionally you can just put it out there as a post on LinkedIn. You share it out as a PDF so people can open it and see it. And you write a little post about, hey, we're super excited to be supporting the federal government, doing this work, that work, and this work. Love to team up if you're interested in teaming. If you're interested in learning more about what we do, reach out, right? Something as simple as that. You can post that thing every three to four weeks. It is not a problem. People sometimes think that if they post it, um, you're going to annoy me because I saw it over and over again. No, that's not how LinkedIn works. LinkedIn will show it to me once, but if you post it again, it might not show it to me, or I might not be looking that day or that week, right? But there's millions of people on LinkedIn. And so you putting out there, it's important. And that's a great way for you to increase the visibility because many federal buyers are on LinkedIn. Um, number three, and in fact, we might even have a federal buyer right here in training today. Uh, and, and so it just kind of reinforces my point. Number three is, I, I mentioned HHS earlier. So you have DSBS, which is the number one market research tool or supplier portal for small business sellers in the federal market, DSBS. And then you have many of these agency supplier portals and uh, like HHS, the Army has one, NAVAIR has one, which is Naval Air Command. Uh, you have, um, I forgot who the other ones are, but you know, they're, they're all listed in there. We have a whole directory, by the way, you can go to our website or, or inside of LinkedIn, excuse me. I have an article in, new, in the newsletter in LinkedIn and it lists out about a hundred different supplier portals agency and then large prime contractors. And here's my thing. I want you to register in all of the supplier portals, maximize your chance for uh, buyers to find you, large buy large prime contractors, federal buyers, et cetera. 
Um, sometimes you might hear people say, oh, you just want to uh, get in these key ones. No, you want to get in the key ones first, but then get in every single one of them. Think about this. I, I mean, I literally sometimes hear people say, oh, you don't, you don't need to get in that supplier portal unless we're ready to work with you. Nope. <laughs> I don't care. I'm getting in there in case one of your buyers accidentally stumbles on the, the tool and searches for something I sell and they go, oh, there's Neil. Let me call Neil, right? Get yourself. It takes five to 15 minutes to get into each one of these supplier portals. And so it doesn't take you a lot of time. But if that registration leads to a meeting, it is paid for itself. You know, uh, on the absolute best side, if it leads to a contract, it's like it just reinforces it. So register in all the supplier portals you can find that are in the federal market. Again, I have a newsletter article that says where they are. It has links to them. Many of my newsletters gives you step by step by step guides on how to fill it out in two to five minutes. Uh, number four, um, and this one's a, a fun one. This is for those of you who are doing sales for four to eight hours a day. Right. At least uh, if you're doing sales and your primary job is sales, whether you're a business owner or a business developer, et cetera, have five introduction meetings a week. Basically, you're looking for one intro meeting a day. This takes time and work to get to happening. But if you want to increase the chances of buyers finding your company, go knock on the door because part of that introduction meeting obviously is meeting that one buyer. But that one buyer can lead you to several others. I met a um, Literally yesterday, I was on a call with a customer. We were looking at an opportunity. We didn't have an update and GovWin's useless. I mean, no offense, GovWin, but I mean, it didn't have anything for us. And so what we did is we went over to uh, um, just, uh, we looked at um, the customer, target customer, and the contracting officers were getting back to us. So we found the head of contracting activity and we reached out. And then they got back to us that same day they got back to us, right? It doesn't happen every time. But they got back to us. And when they did, my point was when I had that intro meeting um, and I was able to talk with that for a few minutes, I was able to then say, hey, do you happen to know who's here, here, here? And they gave me three other names, numbers and emails. And so when you have introduction meetings, you're getting out there. They take your capability st statement from the meeting and save it into a hard drive, et cetera. So have five introductions meetings a week. Right. And if you're not at that stage, don't worry about it. Get to that stage in six months, but eventually get to the stage where you're having one intro meeting a day. Last one is going with what I just said. Respond to sources sought. If you increase the responses to sources sought, that will be in that radar. And remember, one of the first things I said about how they find you is they look at who is responding to RFPs and RFIs. Uh, but make sure you only respond to things that are slam dunk opportunities for your company. All right. Here's what I want you to remember from today's training. Um, the first thing is just remember how buyers search. They fundamentally search just like you, generally a keyword, and they filter down on cert certain things. They might use a NAICS code and then filter on keywords. But figure, understand how they buy. It will help you become visible more. Join the 100 Club, like I mentioned. Go to GovCon in a box, and you will find out. You will find guidance specific to your company, not general, but specific to your company on what you need to do to get to 100 Club. And the last thing is when you're trying to be visible to federal buyers, don't try to be visible to all buyers. Pick one agency like the Navy and dive in there. Meet this person and go to that person. Um, understand where they're looking. How do they buy? If you do that, you will get really, really good at that one agency. And that's how we hear about opportunities. It's just being in the know and having people know us. Okay, so uh, don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter so you can stay aware of other information we have and the training that we have coming up. Tomorrow's training is the three revenue streams. Um, if you understood and valued today's training, throw 100 Club in the chat. Let me know. Uh, put 100 Club rocks in the chat because uh, we really like that 100 Club. Um, and last thing, since I got a couple of seconds, I am going to build a special community networking event free for people who hit the 100 Club. And so you 34, uh, watch out for notices from us early next week. Uh, last thing is, if you're looking to work with us, just reach out to me and just put workshop in the chat or private message me and, and let me know you're interested in our workshop for companies doing 2 million and more. Last thing, government contracting, it is not a secret. It's just a process. Part of the process is ending on time. I'm out of here.